welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad to have you here and thank you so much for watching my previous videos if you're coming back. And if you're new, I have two other videos. I started posting in June and I'm about averaging once a month. Like this video is almost to the day, one month from the last video. So this will probably be just like a monthly update. I have a couple of exciting things to show and I've had some great stitchy days like sessions where I can just focus on stitching so I have been super excited about that and I can't wait to share it with you all. First would like to share my uh, daily 30 project. This one had amazing progress the first week that I decided to do it, which was kind of right when I posted my first or my second video. And um, I think I was just like really into it. So I was like, how many stitches can I get in 30 minutes? And can I beat yesterday? Last week, not so much. Last week, I was like 30 minutes. That's all I got to give you. You'll just have to deal with it. Then this week, I'm back to 30 minutes. That's not enough. And probably going 30 minutes over. So I guess it's all averaging out. I think I'm doing about seven or 800 stitches a week. Um, so basically what you do is you stitch, you pick a project to stitch on for 30 minutes every single day and it all adds up. Some people have figured out that, well, 30 minutes is three and a half hours a week. Why don't I just pick one or two days and get all of that done? You can, but for this particular project, for me, is a whole lot of whites and creams right now, and I just can't, sorry, I have a pet hair. <laughs> um, I just can't focus, it's still there. That's so annoying. Bleh. Oh no, that was my own hair. Bleh. Okay, what was I saying? Oh yeah, so it's a lot of creams and whites, and I can't handle three and a half hours and like two sessions for that. I'll just go crazy. So I will show a picture probably over here where I was the last time you saw it and I'm sure it's made amazing progress. I'm excited to see it as well. But here it is now. Um, let's see if I can hold something up. No, I don't have anything. Hopefully you don't see anything through that. So I'm kind of, Naturally in the pattern, there's a hard line right here. Like I think her, she has a, sh a tie or shirt collar thing going on here and then her sleeve and then her arm. I'm not sure if that's just a crease or if there's something else there, but it's been kind of fun to have an area that I'm just trying to completely fill in. So I don't know if that's covering all of that. I have enjoyed this immensely. I know it's huge. Like, here's my hand. Her head is the size of my hand up here. <laughs> She's only part two. There's like gonna be 12 parts. Part one was the border. That took me a whole month just to do that. I think I had to rip it out like four times. <sighs> Let's see. Okay, so I'm at 81.12% on part two on this. So I have 20% left, which is mostly this area right here. And it ends literally like if you see that one stitch, that is the part that ends and it goes down in that. So it'll all fill the whole Q-snap. The stitch 30 or daily, I think it's daily 30, on Instagram, that hashtag is being used for all kinds of other um, things. So Stephanie from On Point Stitcher, she's also a YouTuber and she's on here. She's super sweet, super fun. I love it when you upload stuff, so please do it more. Anyways, she came up with the hashtag Stitch30 Daily. And um, so we've been using that just to be able to have more of a stitching corner in the Instagram world. Angie Slowly Crafts on Instagram. She's also doing this on one project right now. I think next month she possibly will switch it up, but I don't know. That's up to her. <laughs> Show this to you again. This is what I'm talking about. Look at all of those creams. 
This is an ivory um, fabric. It's an even weave. I think it's 32 count Jobelin. And fully, I call them meh colors because you just go meh. Like, what are these doing here? But once they're all in, love the shading from Pink Free Crafts. I'm sorry, I totally forgot what this to tell you what this was. This is the Wind in the Willows Sal from Pain Free Crafts by, um, the artist is Chris Dunn and he is an amazing illustrator for the Wind in the Willows book that came out. And this was a mystery Sal, so right now we only know what eight of the 12 parts are. Um, but they all have, sorry, that was my dog. <laughs> they all have like a character or more of the scenery, so. I'm excited, but it's huge. It's a very, very large one. The next one that I worked on was my Whip Go for August. It's number 25. And I didn't do nearly as much on this as I wanted to. Life got extremely busy for very good reasons, but also like I was kind of an emotional wreck for a while. I will fill you in on that in a second, but. This is my Super Size Max Color Grand Library from Heaven and Earth Designs by Amy Stewart. And I started this for the Anything Amy Sal that the Stitch Couture's decided to put, put together. We started on June 10th, I believe. I am just over 1% done. This is, where'd it go? I have 9,645 stitches done on this. So I'm going, well, I was doing Royal Rose. I think on this, I'm still doing Royal Rose. So what you do is you go across two squares, two 10 by 10 squares, you do up and down and you do just the one. So it's like a 10 by 20. And you just go across the top and you, you're supposed to park below and uh, start and end your threads over here. Well, since I'm at the top, sometimes if the stitch isn't down below, I'm just gonna carry over here and that continues the, the next column or tower, whatever they like to call it. But that is, I made these marks here. So this is page one, page two, and page three. So I'm into the top of page three. The goal that I had, I had a mini goal. This is supposed to be worked on for 10 days and I did that, but I didn't have very many stitches to show for it, for me. But my mini goal was to get across the three pages because I wanna do three pages this way and three pages below to make a total of six because that's my surface area. And I had this, this idea I had an eight by eight Q snap and an 11 by 11 Q snap. The eight by eight was a little small and the 11 by 11 was a little large. So I just made two eight by 11s. So I just kind of like mix and match them. I'm not the only person that did that. I don't think I thought of it myself. I saw somebody do it a long time ago. So it's not new, but that's gonna be my classic favorite Q snap size of all time. I will probably use it. If I need another Q snap, I'm gonna have to buy two so that I can do 11 and eight and put it together. But that's been a little bit of a frustration for me because I really wanna do more. So the reason that this was slower, my parents adopted a Chinese girl about seven years ago and she was, 14 at the time when we found out about her and in China you age out of the orphanage system at 15 and you get kicked out onto the streets. Um, sorry if this is going like really deep for those of you who are very sensitive but it ends well. <laughs> so she had several malnourishment type conditions and she can walk, she can get around, but she has this thing called um, spina bifida and it, it's basically like a um, thing where your bones aren't formed correctly. So it's, she's pretty wobbly and she always needs support. 
but um, she gets around great. Her kidneys had been failing very rapidly in the last year or two. And she had to go on dialysis in January of this year. And we were looking for a kidney donor. And there's like a whole process through that. And finally, one of our very, very close, longtime family friends volunteered. And they are a perfect, they were a perfect match. And the blood types, the health, the her, her kidneys were functioning at like 130%, which is uh, almost unheard of. So she was just, it was phenomenal and it was such a blessing. And I know it was a miracle, but they just had the um the operation a week or so ago and uh that took a lot of time and, and energy because i hung out with them all at the hospital while they were there and it was just so heartwarming and so touching and i know god's had his hand on chow chow my sister um annie and uh she's 22 and she's doing great. She's recovering amazingly. They've already cut her medication down a lot, but I was just not in an emotional <laughs> contented state. I was either very, very excited or, you know, a little concerned because she had a couple other health um, things going on. So um, long story short, not much stitching time, but for very, very, very good reasons. So I'm just praising God. But the, uh, the girl who donated is doing well as well. So all is well. Okay, next one. I guess this is a really great segue because I had made, I have made amazing progress on his name is Jesus. And here it is. Oh man, there's that light. There we go. I did all the names. So now I just have to do the center part that says his name is Jesus in really big, I believe it's orange. I'm pretty sure that's why I picked that color is so that it would be the orange one. So, yep, I did, um, I did eternal word and, oh, what's over here? Star of Jacob last Sunday. I can't remember what all the other Sundays I did, but I basically worked around the bottom. So, Oh, I love it so much. I'm going to hang this in our uh, winter home in Florida. And my living room colors are all rust and charcoal and cream and green, like for plants. Basically, I'm decorating with plants <laughs> like this. <laughs> I started that on Easter Sunday of this year. So if I can finish that soon, that's great. That'll cover up a few of the starts I have planned through the end of the year and into next year. So then I'll go and I'll move into my next whip go, which is what I've been working on currently. So this is my Sweetheart Cove from Mickey and Minnie. It's a Thomas Kincaid, but I got it off of Etsy. So, you know, who knows? But I started this page. So this whole page, so that's all the progress I've done. Um, I think the last time you saw this was just in my whip parade, so it's not really worth showing all of that, but I might I might show you a picture of what, what it'd look like um, all opened up, because I have like five other pages done over here. So yeah, the sky's been super fast. Like right in here is only two colors. I think I hit 20% as well. For my whip go, uh, like the other one, I do 10 days and I'm on uh, day seven today, but I haven't gotten to stitch on it yet. So I still have four days left and I hit 20% and I'm at 24,825 stitches. That is out of 125,972 stitches. This is on 25 count opalescent Lugana. So I don't know if you can see but the sparkles should show through every now and then through the stitched area, I hope. That was supposed to give some D Disney magic, but I don't know if it did. So, yeah, this one's been really fun. Oh, also kind of big. I switched from one over one full cross, which is on the rest of the project, on this page, I switched to two over one 
half stitches. That's why it's going so quickly. And I needed that because I have way more projects that are actually like legitimate patterns that I would love to spend more time on. I just want to get this one done. This was a um, like an anniversary project that I started last year. This was the reason I jumped down the whole full coverage rabbit hole. I have my Cinderella project. That's my uh, oldest whip, but as far as kitting up a project myself, like gathering a pattern and the floss and the fabric, that's my introduction, introductory piece. <laughs> uh, introductory, yeah, introductory. Okay. Ooh, this is exciting. This is a new start. I'll have to put up a cover photo. I don't have any of those printed out but I started this, it's Mini Blue-Eyed Tiger by Artisy. They have a regular size, but right now this wasn't even really planned, so I had to go small. Since I went big with the Grand Library, I had to go small with this. And I started this with Irene from Stitches in the Tropics, and in between each word is an underscore on Instagram, so if you want to watch her progress, I believe she's going page by page. I am going it originally started out as Royal Rose, but it instead I turned it into a, um, I'm trying to think what that is. A f it's basically four blocks at once, so it's two by two, so it's basically like an inch. But here's my progress so far. This is 18 count Ada, two over two, and I used some old stash from uh, I, I believe it's J&P Coats and DMC, so I'm mixing them. So if my shading is a little bit off, I don't really care, but if you notice, then that's probably why. So this is 1,981 stitches. I know, why didn't I just do 19 more and then I'd have 1,900 stitches? That's at 6%, there are 31,400 stitches. And I decided to park them below and do this little like weavy thing to keep the threads from getting into my work and it's working really well like I I don't get stressed out by it anymore because they're parked and they're fixed so they're not when they decide to flap around they're down here they don't bother me so yeah um this blue dot here that's gonna be the size of the whole piece so yeah I can't hold this up so there, be pretty cute. I um, I was laughing because I figured out that 1% of 31,400 stitches is 314 stitches. And I thought, hmm, I could do that every day and then I'd have a finish by the end of the year. That's if I work on this every day. I'm not working on this every day. That, that's not happening. <laughs> Obviously that's not happening, so. But yeah, I love the shading right there in that stripe. That was beautiful. I loved filling that in. I was like, wow, it's a tiger stripe. Oh, this one's gonna be so cool. And the next thing is actually just a planned new start, but I wanted to tell you guys about it before it started to maybe give you um, a chance to join in. So me and Angie from Angie Slowly Crafts, I mentioned her earlier. Uh, we both have our own pattern for this, but we want to start watching the Gilmore Girls TV series. Uh, apparently, I'm not the only one that likes to go through the whole show in the fall. And what better way to do that than to stitch a Gilmore Girls pattern at the same time. So we're gonna do like a Gilmore Girls marathon stitch along. I'm not sure exactly what hashtag is that we settled on because we threw out so many, um, but it's probably going to be like Gilmore Girls Marathon Sal or uh, I, I think there w there's an abbreviation for marathon. We might do that. So just um, stay tuned. I doubt I will upload another video by the time we have planned to start this because we want to start it on September 1st. So just follow my Instagram and you'll be able to see the hashtag. Hopefully I can put that out there early. 
And if you wanna join in, just get any pattern you can find that you wanna do uh, from Gilmore Girls. But the one that I have is from the Black Needle Society and it's Autumn and Stars Hollow. And they released this in their box last year, but they just released the pattern to the general public this summer. So I'm late to the game because I couldn't get a box, but this is it. And it apparently when all four of these patterns come out, they all string together. So I think the summer one came out this year and the other half of the gazebos here and there's like a Jeep and there's like summery things like watermelons and stuff. But um, for now, this is the only one out to the general public. I believe it was $12. So if you wanna pick it up, you can even start late on the stitch along cause I'm sure this is gonna take me a while. It is 95 by 95 stitches. So it's it's not, it's not crazy large, but it's definitely not a small. <laughs> so that um, that is going to be so fun. I can't wait. I've actually been holding off for a few weeks to watch Gilmore Girls. It's like one of my all time favorite shows. And I wanted to watch it the other day when it was all like, you know that feeling in fall when, when it starts raining and there's a cool breeze and there's like this smell in the air. Oh, I love it. Um, I can get emotional in the fall, but when it starts turning, that's why I get excited. I'm like, it's time for Gilmore Girls. But because of you, Angie, I'm going to wait. I will be good. I will hold off. I have everything kitted up, so I'm ready to go. And one thing I wanted to share, again, I don't think any of these ideas are my original ideas. I just steal them from everyone else. All you brilliant people out there, I'm just copying you. This is a, I haven't actually used this method yet, but I can tell it's going to change the game for me. You would think that's just a regular bobbin of 612, correct? Come on, focus, there we go, see? And I even cut out the label of the DMC. Why is that throwing? There we go. I cut it out and I taped it on there just to look professional. Um, these are cardboard bobbins, they're the cheap ones. And then these are little rubber hair ties, those little clear plastic hair ties. You can buy these really cheap anywhere, a couple bucks. Okay. Here's the exciting part. This, I bought a little hole punk puncher. Not little, cause that's like, uh, I guess half an inch. But I basically punched a hole, cut this to length, and I'm using it as a floss drop. And then when you're done, you just wrap this around and you put the hair tie back on or not, it's up to you if you don't care about it unraveling or not. And then you put it back in your box and it looks like you bobbinated everything, but you didn't. They're like a fake. They're like, um, what do they call that? It, I, I would call this a life hack. If you like the best of both worlds, this is what you want to do. It wasn't all that time consuming and it was way less, unless you really enjoy bobbinating, because I know some people really find it therapeutic to do so, but when you have so many, that can get old. So, um, and these are cut exactly to the length that you want them. I think I did 14 inches. Uh, so I just wanted to share that because I thought that was exciting. So I can't wait to try that out to see if it works really well on my Gilmore Girls. And also, in the comments below, if you're a Gilmore Girls fan, which team are you on? Because I know that can get very heated if you're passionate about one team for Rory. I was having a conversation with my brother a couple weeks ago. He and my sister-in-law are very slowly going through the show. I think she's watched it before, but she's introducing it to him. And he was explaining why he was on a certain team. And I was like very confused because I never saw it that way. But the way he, that, that he, 
described it, I thought it, okay, I can see your side, that makes sense, but <laughs> I don't agree. He's team Logan, I'm team Jess. But I'm team Jess after maturity, like her, uh, for her and him to, let's say, get married, then a lot of growing up would have to happen separately for them to do that. So they would need like a five year gap where it's okay for her to date Logan. But I really need Jess in her life. <laughs> that's just that's just where my heart is at. So let me know what you think. Leave a comment down below. Okay, so you're probably wondering why I'm waving this around. This is something, now I can't remember who it was. Some floss tuber turned me on to this. These are little rubber fingertips that you would get at like an office store. And they're like silicone and they have these little nubby things. And I love them because with my grand library, the threads can get pretty um, tight in the holes, especially if I'm getting near the end of a square, there's not much give there. These grip your your needle amazingly because they're rubber and they're protecting your fingers and they, it's just way less work. So I got these on Amazon, but I'm sure you can get them anywhere. And it's a pack of 12 for $3. And they're gonna last forever, guys. Like I don't see, I don't see you needing to go through these very much. I got size medium, they are a little bit large, but I would prefer that over too small. So this is a great, great find. I love little gadgets that make your life easier, right? Next thing that is very, very helpful. And by the way, this is my haul. These are my two pieces of haul besides organizational stuff, which you kind of, you kind of all know, know that already. I bought these, which again, generic, everybody's using them. They're working well for me. I just bought those little stickers that you would get in the office supply section too. They're like price tag stickers. So, okay, Bobby's. I've seen these all over the place. Never bought them until recently when I had a ton of threads that were getting in my way. And since I like to park, that's sort of the main complaint I have with parking is all of those threads. And now they're out of the way, they're tucked in, not gonna fall out because these things come like this, they pop in and out, whoops. <laughs> they pop in and out. And so what you do is you just wrap the thread around and you lock it and ta-da, you got a nice little container. So those were like, seven or eight dollars for eight of them. So I, I'm only using two right now, but I can tell I'll probably need more even if I, I add them to my other projects. So that is, that is everything. I kind of flew through that a little bit. My videos keep getting a little bit shorter and shorter. Maybe I'm getting more efficient or I'm just not as talkative or slow. Maybe I'm talking faster. Let me know if I talk too fast. I can try to slow down. So I hope you guys have a great September. Hopefully I'll post, I wanna post every two weeks, but it just doesn't seem to be happening. So if you have a great September, great. If I see you in the middle of it, that's even better. And um, like and subscribe and enjoy that intro and outro that I made for you. Love you guys, bye.